Hello and welcome back to Technology Explained. In today's video, we're going to take a look at one of the most complicated vehicles ever created, airplanes. Have you ever wondered how airplanes are able to fly? If so, you're in the right place. Let's get started. An airplane is a type of aircraft that is designed to be able to fly through the air. It is also known as an aeroplane, and it is considered one of the most complex machines ever created. Airplanes are used for a wide range of purposes, from commercial air travel to military operations, cargo transportation, scientific research, and more. The main purpose of an airplane is to transport people, goods, or both through the air. Airplanes are able to do this by generating lift, which is the upward force that opposes the weight of the aircraft. The lift is created by the shape of the airplane's wings, which are curved on top and flat on the bottom. As air flows over the wings, it creates a difference in air pressure, which generates the lift force. In addition to the wings, an airplane has several other important components that are necessary for flight. The fuselage is the main body of the airplane and houses the cockpit, passenger cabin, and cargo hold. The engines provide the necessary power to propel the airplane forward and generate the thrust needed to overcome drag. The landing gear allows the airplane to take off and land safely and the control surfaces, elevator, rudder, and ailerons are used by the pilot to maneuver the airplane while in flight. There are many different types of airplanes, each designed for a specific purpose. Commercial airliners, for example, are designed to carry passengers and cargo over long distances, while military fighter jets are designed for speed and agility in combat situations. Cargo planes are designed to transport large quantities of goods, while smaller airplanes are used for personal transportation or recreational activities such as sightseeing or aerobatics. Overall, airplanes are incredibly complex machines that have revolutionized the way we travel and explore the world. They are the result of decades of scientific research, engineering, and innovation, and they continue to evolve and improve with each passing year. Now let's talk about the important components of an airplane. There are many different parts that make up an airplane, but the main ones are the wings, fuselage, engines, landing gear, and control surfaces. The wings are the most important part of the airplane as they provide lift and support the weight of the aircraft. The fuselage is the main body of the airplane and houses the cockpit, passenger cabin, and cargo hold. The engines provide the thrust needed to propel the airplane forward, and the landing gear allows the airplane to take off and land safely. Finally, the control surfaces, elevator, rudder, and ailerons are used by the pilot to maneuver the airplane. Now that we know the important components of an airplane, let's talk about how it gathers speed. The airplane accelerates on the runway using its engines and the aerodynamics of the wings. The wings are designed to create lift by generating air pressure differences between the upper and lower surfaces of the wing. The engines provide the necessary thrust to overcome drag and move the airplane forward. To understand how airplanes fly, we need to talk about the four main forces that act on an airplane in flight. Lift, weight, thrust, and drag. Lift is the force that allows the airplane to stay in the air and is generated by the wings. Weight is the force of gravity acting on the airplane and is opposed by lift. Thrust is the force that propels the airplane forward and drag is the force that opposes the airplane's motion. To stay in the air, the airplane needs to generate enough lift to overcome its weight and enough thrust to overcome its drag. Now that we know what an airplane is and the important components that make up an airplane, let's dive into how airplanes actually fly. Airplanes fly based on the principles of aerodynamics, which is the study of how air flows around objects. The main force that keeps an airplane in the air is lift. Lift is generated by the wings of the airplane and is created by the difference in air pressure on the top and bottom surfaces of the wing. The shape of the wings is crucial in generating lift and different types of airplanes have wings with varying shapes and sizes. In order to generate lift, the wings must be moved through the air. This is accomplished by the airplane's engines, which propel the airplane forward and create the necessary airflow over the wings. As the air flows over the curved top surface of the wing, it has to travel further than the air flowing under the flat bottom surface. This creates a difference in air pressure, which generates the lift force. The angle of attack is another important factor in generating lift. The angle of attack is the angle between the wing and the oncoming airflow. As the angle of attack increases, the lift generated by the wing also increases. 
However, if the angle of attack becomes too high, the airflow over the wing can become disrupted, and the wing may stall, which can cause the airplane to lose lift and potentially crash. To maintain the lift needed to stay in the air, the airplane must maintain a certain speed, known as the stall speed. The stall speed is the minimum speed at which the wings can generate enough lift to keep the airplane in the air. The airplane speed is controlled by the pilot who uses the throttle to adjust the power of the engines and the control surfaces to maneuver the airplane. In summary, the airplane generates lift by using the shape of the wings, the angle of attack, and the airflow over the wings. The engines provide the necessary forward motion and airflow over the wings, and the pilot controls the speed and direction of the airplane using the throttle and control surfaces. The science of aerodynamics is essential to understanding how airplanes fly and how they are designed. Now that we know how the airplane stays in the air, let's talk about how it keeps direction and control while flying. The control surfaces, elevator, rudder, and ailerons, are used by the pilot to maneuver the airplane. The elevator controls the airplane's pitch, up and down movement, the rudder controls the airplane's yaw, left and right movement, and the ailerons control the airplane's roll, banking left and right. By using these controls, the pilot can maintain direction and altitude while in flight. Additionally, the pilot uses the throttle to adjust the speed of the airplane, which affects the lift and drag. Now, let's talk about the scientific principles that underlie airplane design and flight. Airplanes are based on Newton's laws of motion, which describe how objects move and interact with each other. These laws explain how the airplane generates lift, how it overcomes drag, and how it maintains its direction and speed. Additionally, Bernoulli's principle is used to explain how the shape of the wings and the airflow around them generate lift. Before we wrap up, let's take a look at some incredible videos of airplanes in action. From aerobatic displays to military maneuvers, there are countless amazing videos out there that showcase the power and agility of airplanes. And that's a wrap for today's video. We hope you enjoyed learning about how airplanes fly and the incredible science behind them. Airplanes have come a long way since the Wright brothers' first flight in 1903, and they continue to be an essential part of modern transportation and technology. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, please leave them down below. We would love to hear from you and engage with our viewers. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining videos like this one. If you're interested in learning more about airplanes, be sure to check out our other videos on aviation and aeronautics. We cover a wide range of topics from the history of flight to the latest technological advances in aircraft design. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.